Okay, I noticed in our last, in between videos that I actually made a typo. See, the variable here is website, and that sets the post website into something safe. And I said site here, so if I change that, and you actually noticed right at the end there that my website didn't appear in PHP in my admin, and that is because I forgot the re the variable. So the one thing I didn't add in the last video is something to tell the user that they had successfully registered. And instead of just telling them a message on this register.php file, I want to send them back to the home page with a message that they have registered because being on the register file isn't going to help them anymore. So I'm going to use a function called header. And that in that we can do a lot of things, but one of the most important thing is to we can change the location of the user. So we can use header location and I'm going to send them to index.php. But now I'm going to use a get function and I'm going to send message msg uh, that's how I abbreviate it equal to 1 and now this will send them back to index.php unfortunately we don't have anything that uh, takes that message and uses it in any way so we can use that in our code so if we can get and remember get is something that's in the URL string post is not so if we get message if that is equal to 1 because that is a variable then we can echo you have successfully registered and I set this up so that you can have multiple messages here you can set a different number and have a different message um, right now we don't have any others but uh, in the future you may want to have more so now let's try registering again go back to this register.php form let's try let's just try to register what I had already done So let's try to register using the same information I did last time. But nope, this username is already registered and this email is already registered. So okay, now the user has to go back and input something else. However, there's a slight annoyance here that all the information they put in last time, like their website or maybe their email if they had gotten the email, okay, all of that is deleted. And rather than type that again, I'd rather have it show up. So even so what we can do down here is in the value which I've left blank for now we can do p php echo dollar sign underscore post username now the beauty of this is that if they did not post a username at all this will come out blank so if they just came to the page for the first time then there won't be a problem however if they are coming back to this page with an error it will show them what they had inputted last time so they can change it so we want to have email here and we want to have a website here. So now, if I resend this, see now it automatically fills out. I wouldn't recommend automatically filling out the password just because passwords are should be secure. So let's change this to video guy to boss two and type in a password. And actually, let's try to let's test the system. Let's call a video uh, single quote guy. Two. Now there's a screen name. So if we register that, that's not supposed to happen. Oh, I remember what. See, here's what's going on. That uh, when we were using it in our other queries, when we were using the username, uh, testing it, before when we were testing to see if the uh, if it was already registered we didn't HTML entities that and that's messing up the query so let's just set another another variable actually we can just do this right here as we can say HTML entities this may get a little crowded for you you may want to use a separate variable for it but this will work this is perfectly valid if you just put it right up there HTML entities And quotes. Okay, so now if we reload that, now we shouldn't have any problems. And did I spelled it wrong? I do that a lot. Entit entities, not entities. Okay, 
Now this is the standard debug process for when you're going through. And see, now it's successfully registered, and that's what I wanted to see. So if we go into phpMyAdmin, look at the users table, we have video number and number 39. Now, you should be familiar with, that's how HTML uses quotes that are should be encoded as quotes, and everything worked out fine. The HTML entities converted that to something that is better for MySQL, and see so we have their join date, their number of posts, and their level. Posts and level were set to uh, automatically go to zero, so that worked. And now we can uh, assume that our user system is all set. So I'm just going to show you one application of this, and if we go back to our news page, do you remember how on our post table we had a user column for the user who posted this? Well, I want to use that to in our uh, news page. So instead, of, now we could just echo the row user, but remember we stored that as the user's ID. And seeing as as user number one, well maybe number one you could remember, but if it was posted by user number 37, then it would get hard to remember, and I'd much rather have their user name there rather than their user number. So what we're going to do is we're going to MySQL. We're going to make a new query. User name, we'll call it, equals MySQL query. And we want to select the name from users where ID. And it's okay if you use the if, and actually that's new to you, the where part. I didn't explain it that well in the last video, but basically it'll go through the entire database and if the ID or whatever you enter in is equal to what you tell it to, then it'll only return those rows. So where ID equals to uh, that'd be row user, because this row is from the original query where we're querying the posts table, and we want to limit one because we can only have one user. Now, we can go through a while loop to fetch all this data for us. However, we can just do something just as easily, and we can make user name array equals MySQL fetch array username, which is our MySQL query. Now, what this does is it assigns an array to that username array, which is an array, um, but you don't but you can only use it if you have one row and since we only returning one row this is okay so now we can now we can just echo user name array name and if you echo that out it should display video guy which is the name I entered oh here's something interesting uh, we don't want to do that so let's just get rid of this message part and just go back to the root see now it got my name so this is an example of a cross table query where you and actually it's a query within a query so it this is more complex and if you have several many news pieces on one page it can start to slow down if it has to do a, a query for every time it goes through this so I mean that won't happen unless you have a lot of news pieces but just be aware that uh, MySQL queries do take time and you can't uh, just use them unlimitedly. Okay, so instead of just writing that out, I'm going to put a BR tag after the date and a end of line. And before this, I'm going to write echo posted by. And now it should look a little nicer. Posted at, and we get posted by. Now, um, as I said, you can only do this through phpMyAdmin right now. Um, however, in our next video, I'll, I'll show you how to make a simple comment form for your users to interact with these pieces of news.